سلام ز خبر کنت خاتتلتی مدبنا کمیت خانو بیشوب مار ماری ایمانویل دهرتی کدم خلد تسمون بخرا اوشت ای بیت کرستیان النسب خون کل روز وارد آمد کاتی لومی سنبت اسران شم منتن میازه بیت کرستیان تمیلیم ملقتی نتیجه کامن اسین نقلو حزبی علمن ام محلالی فمالو بیشوب مار ماری ایمانویل بیت خرستیان از سیریان زگرگلو آب بخینم از چند شعات میتن سمنین حموشتن کتا تولیدم ز عبیلا عراق و ز حجی ز نبرلا زلو آوسترالیا تسدیدم ابزی نفل مگزی بیت خرستیان با اکال ترخیم ز اسمعو کال هیال ملختیم ام حلالی فم زلو نتی ملختی کم زلو با انقو انگلیسیا نبخت کم بخم سعد نقربا شمت بابا و برونا و رخت خودش خاله شریر آمین. First Corinthians thirteen eight, love never fails. This is our Christian faith, but above all, this is our Christ, who is all love, and always taught to love one another. Because God is love and the Lord Jesus, he is God revealed in the flesh, period. He taught us to love everyone without any differentiation. This will never change. For as long as Christ lives in our hearts, this will never change. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This young man who did this act almost two weeks ago, I say to you, my dear, you are my son. And you will always be my son. I will always pray for you. I'll always wish you nothing but the best. I pray that my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to enlighten your heart, enlighten your soul, your entire beating, to realize, my dear, there is only one God who art in heaven, the creator of all mankind and everything else that is visible and invisible. And I say with absolute love, confidence, and humility that God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But you are my son, my dear, and the Lord knows it is coming from the bottom of my heart. I'll always pray for you. And for whoever was in this act, in the name of my Jesus, I forgive you, I love you, and I will always pray for you. For me, it's a, a priceless gift that I am not worthy of. I pray the Lord accepts it. بسم الاب والابن والروح One last thing I say to our beloved the Australian government and our beloved prime minister the honorable Mr Albanese I believe in one thing, and that is the integrity and the identity of the human being. This is my belief, and this is above all my Christian belief, for this human identity, this human integrity is a God-given gift, no one else. Every human being has the right 
to the freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Every human being. The Buddhist has the right to express their belief. The Hindus have the right to express their beliefs. The Muslims have the right to express their beliefs. The atheists have the right to express their beliefs. Also the Christians have the right to express their beliefs. And for us to say that free speech is dangerous, that free speech cannot be possible in a democratic country, I'm yet to fathom this. I'm yet to fathom this. We should be able as civilized human beings, as intellectuals, we should be able to criticize, to speak, and maybe at some certain times we may sound or we may come across offensive to somewhat degree. But we should be able to say, I should not worry for my life to be exposed to threat or to be taken away. A non-Christian can criticize my faith, can attack my faith. I will say one thing. May God forgive you and may God bless you. This is a civilized way, an intellectual way of approaching such events if or when they take place. But for us to say that because of this freedom of speech, it is causing dramas and dilemmas, therefore, everything should be censored, then where is democracy? Then where is humanity? Where is integrity? Where is, where, where are the morals? Where are the ethics? Where are the principles? Where are the values which the Western world more so have been fighting for human rights, human rights, which is the value of the human. But you see the problem, the problem my beloved Australia and the entire world, the entire world, I'll, I've said this and I'll say it again. The Western world has succeeded exceedingly. The Western world has succeeded exceedingly in giving value to everything. But I say this with utmost sadness in my heart. The Western world has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The Western world has succeeded in giving value to everything, but has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. But until we find the purpose of the thing, we can never give it value. We can never give it value. Human rights is human value. All these centuries, decades, we've been calling and crying and fighting for human rights, human rights. When will the time come? When will the time come for us to fight for what is the right to be a human, not human rights? Not human rights, the right to be a human. Nobody speaks about the right to be a human. Everyone speaks about human rights. And since we focused on value and we've denied the purpose, we have abused that human, abused. In order to finding out and knowing what is the purpose of the human, we need to go back to the origin of this human. And with all love and respect to every scientist, to every professor, to every knowledgeable man and woman out there, with all love and respect, the purpose of the human is written in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. God is the purpose to that human. 
God. And until we come back to this true divine God, we will continue abusing the human race because we got glued onto the value of the human and totally denied the purpose of the human. The purpose is the right to be a human, the value human rights. I stand as a very proud Aussie. I want the Australian government to hear this and the whole world. I was born in Iraq. I am an Assyrian. My origin, I am an Assyrian and a very proud Assyrian. Because the Assyrians have a very profound history of knowledge, culture, science, masters, masters. And as an Assyrian, I am a very proud one. But above all, and beyond all, I belong to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm a very proud Christian. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the love of my life. This is a given. This will never change. By His grace, I'm nothing. But He's everything. I was born in Iraq. I'm a Syrian Christian, a Syrian. Migrated to Australia in 1985. My second home is Australia. Let me say this to the Australian government and to every beautiful Aussie. I am a very proud Aussie. I may not look it, but as they say, do not judge the book by its cover. Maybe the looks is not Aussie, but the heart I can show you is a fair income true blue down under brother. I will put the prawns on the barbie with Mr. Albanese and with Mr. Peter Dutton any day of the, any time of the day. And I'll say to them, g'day mate, and let's have some bush taka meat pie mate, because life is not worth it. And fish burger and chocolate sundae is my shout, Mr. Albanese and Mr. Peter Dutton. I am a true blue Aussie. I am a proud to be an Australian. And wherever I go, wherever I travel across the globe, when I come back here, this is home. And I said it, I am very proud of these great Anzac warriors who gave their life up to the very human rights, to the very freedom of speech and freedom of religion. They died to keep and preserve the human identity and integrity. I salute my beloved Anzac warriors and whoever walks in that path must be saluted. And this is why I stand for that freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Every human has the right to the freedom of speech and, and freedom of religion. Every human being, no matter who that is, everyone has the right. God bless you. I've kept you for too long, but this is my normal me again. <laughs>